In this fourth part, we are going to spline the whole torso chain. Let's display the torso controller by clicking the mid layer. We should see all of our curve and by pressing the dot key on the numpad, I will be able to focus the view in the graph editor onto all the keys. I generally start with the up and down motion playing with the Z curve and focus on it by staying in a side view. I sped up a bit the video because this process can be a bit tedious, but currently what I'm doing is that I'm slightly offsetting the movement between the impact of the foot on the ground and the position of the torso, meaning that the down position of the torso will occur like one or two frames after the contact pose. And as you can see, I have for the up position and the down position two pretty close keys that will allow me to have some kind of floating effect in the air, which is not correct physically wide. I should have a perfect sinusoidal curve, but it will bring a bit of stylization to our movement, making our character floating a bit in the air. Then I just have to align both first and last keyframe. I will now switch to the front view so that I will be able to work on the left and right position more easily. The most extreme position will occur when the, the supporting leg is bent to the maximum and then the motion will change of direction when the leg is pushing the body toward the other side. Since we have a cycle and mirror position, the value of the curve should be the same in both positive and negative direction. And to find the right timing, you just have to offset the very first key by 12. In this case, it's placed at the fifth frame. And so if I mirror this key to the frame number 17, I'm sure that I will have the right position in time. We now just need to polish our curve a little more and what I will do is as before I will add a second key near the extreme pose just to slow down a bit the direction swap and giving some weight to the animation. If our character was very light the change of direction will be very fast but here he has a pretty strong torso so we want it to be slowing down like his weight is pulling him on each side or toward the ground and up in the air. So I will do this by adding those additional keyframe. I won't be working on the forth and back motion since I didn't figure how to do it, but Luciano gave me some input later on, so on the very last chapter of this tutorial we'll be working on this and refining some enhancement for this animation. We can now work on the hips of our character, so I will select it, select all the curves. I will hide some of the unwanted channels by clicking the little eye icons. It just means that you are hiding them. They are still used, but since it's the location and I haven't changed the location of the hips during the animation, those curves are just flat. I will first start working on the left and right motion from the front view. So I want a pretty smooth movement with some acceleration whenever the foot will touch the ground, meaning that all the weight will be supported by the hips and the foot. So the hips should rise faster at this moment. Curved wise, it means that we will have a more accentuated changement of the value of the curve around the contact pose. And this is something we can see here. We have 
some kind of flat transition or very progressive transition and around the contact we have those two peaks in the curves. The Z curve will allow us to play with the spinning of the hips, meaning this is the axis that will pull the legs forward. So once I've pulled the first leg forward, what I will do is duplicate the extreme key and just move it 12 frames later and input a negative value. This allows me to mirror the pose without even looking at the animation. I can then refine my timing by adding some additional keys and make sure that my very first and very last keyframe are the same. Then I will just have a look at the W axis, which is the quaternion axis, and since it has a very subtle influence onto the animation, I will just get rid of the keys. It will be easier for me to refine eventually the curves on the three main axis than playing on the fourth axis that is not used here or not really influencing the animation. Since I haven't really inputted any forward and backward motion during the blocking stage, I will do it during the, this uh, splining stage by selecting the X axis. So the idea is that on the contact or just before the contact, the pelvis should be pushing forward just before your character touch the ground and then uh, the butt will push backward so that it pull the legs back to input some energy in the, in the run. As usual, I'm inputting some additional keys to break down the regularity of the movement so that we have uh, some more uh, contrasted movement which inputs weight to our character motion. I can then work on the torso rotation, so I will hide the location axis and I will mostly offset every keys because those keys were set up during the blocking stage but the torso should have a slight offset. The movement should occur a bit later than what we have inputted during the blocking stage because it follows the movement of the hips. So I will mostly move all the keys to the right and then try to find a good curvature in the movement. I will then work on the up and down movement, so I will enable the Z location curve and the idea is to have some kind of follow through animation, meaning that compared to the main torso controller, the chest controller should have a bit of delay in its movement when the torso controller is at its down stage. Um, the chest controller will be somehow in a mid position in the air and when the torso controller is raising in the air uh, the chest controller will be in its down position so, uh, so that you will have some a bit of squatch and stretch movement and um, this will input weight for sure and it will make the animation more stylized uh, it will make it funnier in a way
I will then uh, work with the X and Y location axis and I will slightly offset the position of the torso compared to the contact pose, meaning that um, the extreme pose of the torso or the extreme location of the torso will occur maybe one or two frames later and this will input weight again to our animation. My work on the neck was mostly to make a clean and regular sinusoidal movement so that it inputs some movement but since the neck is not influencing our character that much it's mostly um, that I wanted to have a clean animation so even if I can't really feel it I knew that I needed to uh, make this uh, pretty clean movement and then I will really input more motion by playing with the head movement in putting some back and forth movement right to left movement but also up and down and squash and stretch So for the head now, I will make a clean animation, meaning that it will be mostly a sinusoidal curve and it will be slightly offset compared to the chest position. So as you can see, we've just uh, played with the hips that were offset compared to the foot, then the chest offset compared to the hips, and now we are offsetting the end movement compared to the chest. So this is the overlapping of 404 animation and uh, I will keep it clean and I will input more movement by playing with the uh, Y axis scale that will input some squash and stretch to the head later on. So here you can see the slight left and right motion. Don't be too extreme with this or a character will look a bit dumb or like he's not controlling his head. So now I will play with the Y location and just again offset a bit. So when the chest goes down, the head will be slightly up. And when the chest is raising, the head will be uh, squashed a bit downward. And then playing with the skull in the same fashion, we'll be able to add a very, not extreme, but exaggerated movement that will make our character funnier or our animation more stylized. I will repeat this offsetting process with the Z axis location, meaning it's the forward and backward position. So I clean the keyframe because there was there were no information written and I will just slightly offset it so when the chest moves forward the head should be a bit backward and when the chest start to move backward the head will be in its forward position. The final stage is to play with the scale of the head so currently I figured that playing only with the Y axis was okay. At first I thought I had to play with all the axes but I get a decent result playing only on the Y scale. So if you want, uh, you can play with all axes. Uh, you will eventually get a better animation for sure if you think to play with the squash and stretch on all axes. Uh, I was quite lacking of time and honestly felt a bit lazy. And uh, I think that if you get a nice uh, Y scale curve animation 
that should be okay. So when the head will be falling, I will pull it, I will stretch it. And when the head will be pushing up, it will be squashed a little bit. And so we can create a nice sinusoidal curve and that should make it okay. So then I will make sure that my very first and very last keyframe are aligned and that I rotate the point so that uh, it follows to the next keyframe. And we are going to be okay for this chapter and I'll see you on the next chapter where we'll be animating the shoulders and the hands.